And then we'll move on to item nine, which is actually moving us into requesting uh, approval of one of these two options to actually remediate what is... Sorry, 10, thank you. Thanks, Mr Deputy. I'll note that. <laughs> <You don't laughs> Which is actually to remediate a, a risk. So if you'd like to just briefly introduce this, and I'd like you to cover off um, why you've suggested option one instead of option two, please. Uh, certainly. So um, <clears throat> I'll keep it brief and <clears throat> recognising time. Um, but there has been a number of... Um, Yes, mate. <laughs> yeah. Right. I some. <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. Uh, following the Christchurch earthquake sequence, a number of closed landfill sites have sustained structural damage. Uh, the Bexley landfill has suffered damage to uh, the capping material. Uh, subsidence of up to half a metre has occurred uh, near the Bridge Street area. Uh, of the estuary following the subsidence, uh, old landfill material from around about the 1970s, 1980s has gradually been exposed uh, by erosion along the western side of the estuary margin. Approximately 600 linear metres of foreshore requires remediation. This poses a risk of landfill material dispersing and or discharging onto the estuary during a storm event. Um, what I might do is get Grant just to talk through the, the preferred option yep. um, and just the reasons uh, behind that. Yeah. So just the preferred one? Yeah, I guess start with you, thanks. Okay, so the preferred option is, um, it's basically, it's not a very high tech one, it's sort of old school um, sort of uh, treatment, whereby you have, you see there's a picture yes. showing it. You've got one, one layer of AP20 which is compacted over the landfill. Um, a layer of AP100 compacted, and then there's boulders up to about 400 mils in diameter just dumped on top of that surface to basically contain any landfill material that could potentially be washed out into the environment and to protect the, the area from further erosion. Um, I guess the, the main advantage of, of this is it's compared with the option two, which is um, a protective measure. Um, this containment measure only costs about 1.5 million a bit less than that. Um, you know, it's, there, there are actually boulders on site being stored that we can use, so it's relatively straightforward work. And we could potentially get the work done by sort of about October next year. Um, I guess the disadvantages are it's not um, a really high spec engineered design like a, um, like a protection measure would be. Um, so therefore there will be ongoing maintenance and we're looking at over the next 25 years, oh, you, it'll give protection for about 25 years, and over that 25 year period, there'll be around about uh, probably $15,000 per year required for maintenance. Uh, so that, there's an additional cost there. And also because uh, you can see on the map, it's where the, the estuary is quite narrow, you get some quite high tidal flows coming in and out, high velocity waters, which could, could potentially erode this um, material where <coughs> the option two would be much more um, robust. So that's a disadvantage. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah, actually quite mainly... surprised at the level of the cost of the maintenance because you've put it in the table as minimal. It's 15k a year. It's, it's a reasonable amount, isn't it? And can I w ask what the cost of maintenance for option two is? Cause we, we haven't looked at that, but it would be less. Yeah. Yeah. But we haven't looked at that, no. Okay. Is it worth just um, yeah. flagging a couple of points to support what Grant said? Um, basically, we've obviously looked at containment options that include, um, you know, a polypropylene uh, landfill barrier. Yeah. Um, but and we've had this issue elsewhere in council that those uh, engineered gem membranes are actually shedding microplastics, yeah. and we're obviously very keen to avoid anything like that in the coastal yeah. marine. And that's why we've gone for, I guess, the lower tech option. Um, of, the, of the gravel and rock containment, and that actually matches what we've got elsewhere in the estuary. Yeah. So it kind of brings all of that estuary containment up to the same standard um, and allows us to kind of, I guess, work with that, um, with those wider estuary you know, considerations. I guess what we're looking at really is um, kind of like half the cost and half the life um, of option two. Um, but if, 
do you feel that that's going to be robust enough to actually contain this risk? There has been some work done just to south of, of that where it's marked, where it has been marked, and that has the, a similar approach. Uh, and that was done 20 it was years 1995, ago. so 25 years ago. Yeah, and, and that is still still um, uh, operating, and it's still containing that that area. So so we feel that that it, it is a, a, a the best option. So right. uh, we're not spending yep. Yep. that much on maintenance uh, on that area. Right. Um, but just as a as a as a, as a a best guess for maintenance, we, we're looking at perhaps 15k a year, which would cover the odd storm event, which would would need additional right. work. Well, that's really helpful to know that there is an example of this technique and it's working. It's working. Any other questions from the committee, Mike? Actually, my question was around that, so it's pretty much answered. But just to clarify, because an option two, you've got the advantages there. What's we'll talk about being uh, protection there for 50 years plus the risk of significant failure is low, but obviously you don't put that as an advantage for option one. So I just want to make sure that is an advantage of option one, that the risk of significant failure is low. It's, it's higher than the expense of option, for sure, but given that that area south has withstood the whole earthquake sequence and is still holding shape pretty well after 25 years, um, it's, yeah, still it's... It's low. It's a, it's a low risk, <coughs> but not yeah. as low. Phil and then Yanni. Thank you, guys. I, I believe um, if you, at the lower end of that yellow line, where it goes up against the oxidation ponds, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, from there all the way around the oxidation ponds, oxidation, oxidation. Yep. The, 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 the ponds, ponds. <laughs> um, it was um, sheep piled after the earthquake. Is that right? To protect the ponds from falling over in another earthquake and filling the... Um, yeah. uh, sorry, I'm not aware. Uh, well, I know for a fact between those two ponds, that straight line between them, there's a row of sheep poles down there. I feel that if a third option that should be looked at <coughs> is sheep piling it all the way around there, three metres deep, uh, three metres, a metre and a half above the, the ground and a metre and a half into the so mud... So, Phil, you're asking a question. Has uh, sheep pile been considered? Have, have you... Yes. Ha I'm looking at the picture. Yes. Look at <laughs> have stuff. you taken into account the a sheep piling option? Good no. question. No, we, no, haven't. we haven't. I, I, I feel you should because I think it would be a lot more cost effective because there would be no maintenance at all. Well, one of the things I think you'd find it would be very difficult to consent uh, around that estuary edge, particularly uh, this is the big issue uh, any works here will have to get a consent and just looking at the um, we're trying to do a cycleway elsewhere mm. on the estuary edge and the level of um, naturalisation I think that's about the right word is quite significant we're working our way um, through that I imagine that a, a street sheet piling probably would work all right but I imagine we would have some pretty complex consenting issues around it um, because you, 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 you wouldn't see it, you wouldn't you wouldn't see it be flush with the ground, because it's it's no different to the top level of, of that. Um, that yes, it would be, but it would be seen from the estuary at low tide because it'd have to be higher than your king tides, basically. Mm, um, you would see it. Yeah. It, it's still it's still be that, that you haven't got yeah, anywhere if, near the if, disruption. If, if the committee would like us to look at sheep piling, we can certainly go away and look at sheep piling. Um, well, thank you. That's what you would. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on with. Have you got another question, Phil? Well, no, oh, no. No, that's a good question, <coughs> obviously, of staff. Um, now, Tim and the, Tim I guess, and the I guess you know the, the fifteen grand a year for maintenance is for the six hundred metres. Is that right? Yes. So you know, if we can look at other areas in Christchurch and we're looking at you know, the future around the foreshores, etc. I mean, it's going to become prohibit our maintenance costs are going to become prohibitive. So I th do think, as my um, fellow councillor mentioned, we do have to look at options that are less cost effect or less effective or less costly. Less costly. And so, I, I mean, I think I would agree with m my colleague here that we've got to look at those. Yeah. 15 grand for 600 metres it's per a, year. It's questions, it's, though. Well, yeah. But I'm going to come to that to address that. Yeah. Well, are there other areas, because this is only one of the, the areas that we're looking at, that will be in that ballpark? You mean other closed landfills uh, yep. on the estuary? Yeah, yeah, or anywhere else. I mean, is there are we looking at that level these? of expenditure to mitigate risks in any other areas? And 
So d depending on the, what, what remediation is uh, the preferred, yes, that type of remediation, we are expecting that there will be an ongoing maintenance. Yep. We haven't had that expenditure on the area south. Mm. We feel like, uh, as Grant said, because of the tidal movement through that narrowed uh, piece, there, there mm. could be that expense. It may not be there. We just want to flag that, yes, it's, it's likely that... Uh, Averaged out over the next 25 years with storm events, that will, will probably round about the 15k. That's our best guess. Yep. It, it may it may not yep. come to that. Uh, we don't really know. Yeah, so we don't know, but it may well be. And so you're quite right. Yeah. Yanni. Yeah, I just um, note that it's a bit unclear from the map, but I think this is in my ward, and so. The, oh yeah. The, I was going to put that in the resolution. The Lynwood Central Heathcote board should really get briefed on it. I mean, I don't want to hold this up but I think possibly it should have been a joint briefing to the two boards um, so can we just check that going forward and maybe we can get some information to them um, but yeah. again I just the, the thing that I'm still sort of struggling with with this whole stretch of our coast is you know there's a 360 walkway there's you know cycleways etc and again if we're building sort of buns or, or new structures along the coast what opportunity have we explored for that for that recreational thing? And it may be that you know this is totally the wrong location, but it may be that there's some opportunity. I just don't know. Well, I think I mean it's always good to look at the opportunity. However, what we're looking at here is basically a, doesn't look like good land to put a walkway or a cycleway over. It's about containing the the um, the tip on the water um, boundary. So. But I think if staff were aware of that in, in future um, to yeah, actually look at that. There's been substantial, um, the, the earthquake damage, is, uh, there's um, a, a lot of uneven ground, there'd be a lot of work to create it. Uh, oh, yeah. more familiar. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, yeah. lot of lateral spreading and there's tension cracks which are still open today yeah. um, around the edge. Um, and getting back to that cycleway walkway, it, it actually is not going to go around the edge there, it's going to yeah. go right through the middle where yeah. that track is. On the map. So can I ask um, how long it would take to get a quote for um, sheet piling? Can I, can I just ask to get the response first? Yeah, look, we, we can work, work on that straight away. Yep. yep. Uh, so uh, uh, we've, have you, have, as you've seen, we've sort of worked through uh, seven options with, with the engineering people. That wasn't one that they'd considered, but we're happy to take that back. So we'll just say it's a priority. And I'm not sure how long it takes them to calculate that, but uh, well, as soon as they Well, it's quite relevant can. to what a decision that we make, because if it was going to be months or years, I wouldn't want to postpone this. But if it was going to be a week, we could, or within the month before the next meeting. We, we would have to bring back a report, because there's implications of that option, resource consenting, we would have to probably talk to uh, the S3 people. There's more than just costs associated if you went to decided that that was an option that you wanted to look at. Um, I did say we did do a bit of sheet piling down at um, da -da -da, the beach wall that we've put down at Redcliffs, but you also note that we spent a fortune actually actually facing that so that it doesn't actually look like sheet piling in any shape or form. Admittedly, that's in a very complicated, a lot more complicated site because of flows and that, but there was sheet piling part of that so uh, work done by... Looked. Correct. Yeah. Um, so and then it's got the a huge um, concrete um, rim beam on the top. Um, but yeah, but admittedly that's a lot more complicated site than this. So okay. we have... Mike, yeah. did you want to say something? Yeah, sorry, my, it's going to be a comment more on that line because yep. it's more than just the cost to do yep. it, it's the environmental impact and the actual mm. potential of leaching from the landfill mm. through the sheep piling, which is a known is factor. It? In it. Yeah. So did you know that? The landfill can actually leach through <coughs> the sheet piling, which may well be why it was not bought as an option. It'll leach through the yeah. yeah. The rocks. Yeah. Is it worth noting that we already have our resource consent monitoring for landfill leachate on this site, um, and we're well below those limits? So this is really about a containment of landfill material, as in landfill yep. debris, okay. rather, rather than leachate. Okay. So... Yeah. There must be a reason why your engineering experts did not put sheet piling in as one of the options, and maybe that would be quite uh, lost. So, yeah, if you look at uh, page 61, uh, item number 6 there, we've got the uh, in, uh, some points around the community views and preferences, yep. um, and the communities around the estuary residents across the sea are very passionate about maintaining, protecting the uh, unique estuarine environment. So 
this is would have been a factor um, that that's taken consideration. That, I think too there's uh, there's also some work looking at the whole of the, the, the estuary area so um, I, I imagine there want to be some consistency around that uh, with, with what has been done so I, I would suggest that that is why that, that wasn't considered but <coughs> in terms of going back to you the question um, yes we could get a price for that I imagine in a few weeks but th th there would need to be more more than consideration than just the price. So going down that road will delay this significantly? And it may not get resource consent, as uh, Dave has said. So, and also we do. I know we've got um, the Utah Trust is passionate about the estuary and very guarded about what goes on. Um, and that may well be the feedback that you've got on that um, for 6.2. Um, so, um, I think we're at a point that we really probably should either carry on with this as an option, or, um, or look at what Phil wants to do. I'm actually happy to move this as an option to get it going. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, because I had to dash out, so I might have missed it. But on the image that we've got from the previous paper, there's a um, non-CCC-owned land site on the other side of the estuary mm -hmm. in South Shore. Did you have a discussion about that? No. We, did, just, just, we did touch on non-CCC-owned and their responsibility well, if he can. I don't know whether that is that it's just owned by Lynn's because it's red zoned. Oh, okay. um, so. No, no, no. Well, well, we're taking over it, remember, so I'm just saying. Um, and it, the, the, um, in terms of the uh, protection that needs to be around this other one, it may be that this is going to come back to us in the very near future. So I'm just, I'm just highlighting it because if one option is one thing, then we can't really have another option on the other side either. So... Um, and I'm just... Would you like me to follow that up with the property yeah. team? I think um, they've done due diligence on what's been transferred and not transferred. Um, and so I'll just see what the detail of that landfill is. And Yeah, see, I didn't um, know that was a landfill there. Yeah. And the other one is the is the <coughs> little council-owned block. Little, little nip, yep. Yeah, yeah. on that side, because it's and we not... we are doing some work in there at the moment. Um, um, exactly the detail, I'm not sure, but it's a, a combination between Helen's team and Parks and Reserves, yeah, where we yeah. are doing all that foreshore work. Um, but, but which we've, is a we've, we've passed resolutions about, you know, sort of yeah. um, some of the erosion issues on that part, of, yeah. and we might be able to double up. I mean, do both projects at the same time, yeah. it just seemed to me. And look, we have, uh, as an option three, um, do nothing in the short term, a way to wider community consultation ahead of repairing no, the site. I think and people estuary will wide. just die of boredom if they have to wait another community consultation <coughs> on this side. Mm. I just think that, I'm not saying hold up this, I actually yeah. think that option one is very sensible, but I think that um, option one might be very sensible in those two other locations as well, but um, I'd want to sort of kind of. And want we to may know. have already done something there, and so it's not an issue. Yeah. But let, let us come back, and we could come back with a memo on that yep. rather than a, yep. a report. No, we'll just get a memo out to councillors be good. on those two sites. Yeah, because we had a deputation this morning um, from Genevieve, and she was doing some rubbish collection on the site that Leanne's talking exactly. about. Exactly. On the and other it, side. <clears throat> And yep. it looked like it could be leaching out. <coughs> right. Looks pretty thing, dire. A lot of stuff there, so that'd be good. When would we get that memo back? Um, look, I have to talk to property. I'm sorry, I'm three days away from, well, five days away from Christmas, but we'll get that as soon as we possibly can. Right. Um, it may have all been all done, and it, so it might be just a matter of putting that. Yeah. Yeah. Our first Before meeting would be fine yeah. next year. Um, Tim, you got a question? Yes, I have, thank you. Um, the, the key to this, I, under, I understand, is to protect the landfill. So we, we have permission to have leaching to a, a standard, so that's, and we're within, well within that. So this is to protect it from um, sea surges and weather so we don't get the Fox River. So the key to this is actually not to make it look pretty, so to speak, but to protect it in an event of some kind. Yes, and, and the containment of that material, that uh, um, uh, the, the landfill material from coming out into the estuary, yes. there, there will be some leachate. I mean, yep, no leachate is yep. good, but it has been monitored and it is well below the, the levels. Mm -hmm. But yes, this is primarily to contain mm -hmm. and protect against any sea surges that, that may yep. result in further damage. 
And one could presume that if the areas that Leanne's mentioned are of the same nature, that we would be following the same kind of look as these kind of become apparent to us. Yeah, look, I think if, if the preferred option is if we can replicate that in other areas and it's effective in those areas, yep. uh, yes. Well, that's logical, yeah. Thank you very much. James. Um, <coughs> Kia ora. Uh, the, could you bring up that um, picture that um, picture of the yellow line yeah okay so whereabouts is the exit to the ocean outfall there is it below that yellow line mm. oh you, you can see that building just below yeah. the line that's the pump station that's it yeah right so. okay the the thing that I want to ra um, well, I'll ask is have you thought about speaking to Ngai Tuahuriri because there's a um, Mahinga Kai site right on the end of that yellow and there was quite a bit of court it on drama about that particular site, right? So I think you just need to, that's, that needs to be high on your list of um, consider, things that you're considering with respect to this, okay? Um, and then the second thing that I've got is, could you bring up the um, picture with the, what Leanne was just talking about, those, that other um, uh, landfill site on the oh, other sorry. side? <coughs> Have you got that picture? It's where the EF traps are, isn't it? Yeah. Go, where the ten, where the ten, where the ten um, sites are, please. That's the we're just, we're just report. rolling through the report. Was the site right. that Genevieve mm -hmm. was talking about was right at the end of <coughs> Beatty Street? Yeah. Is that the same as where your that, one is? No, that's not this even. That's different again. Not this one. The one that's on the other going. side. Yeah, that no. One. Yeah, there, that one. That one. No, it's not that. It's not the Who, same as the one. She, no, she got that rubbish off was higher screen. up than that. Oh, right. There. there you go. So the, Thank you. It's the so that one, see that one on the on the right, line. most of the right, that little blip there on the right. That's okay. at Caspian Street. Yeah, Caspian ah. Street. She was at Beatty. Yes, she which was. Is further right. so it's but not the that same Caspian one. Street site, that's going to be more subjected to more um, of a southerly. When the southerly comes in, it hits hard there. And that's what parks are doing at the moment, along with whichever the other one is. That's more vulnerable to storm yeah, surge on that and, and we are protecting that whole edge, and so I think we've got that. We're only bringing this one up because it's an issue. Hang on, Dave. Other, when you say we are protecting that edge, you mean through the land drainage recovery program? It's a stuff, mixture between the... parks and land drainage, depending on what we're doing. We've actually okay. got, and that's been through the community board. So there's some work the exact already details, going. Yeah. Um, it's been through the ITI committee. Yeah, we just want to... Exactly. Yeah, and yep, we will. Yep. That's what I was going to come back checking. Right. That that's those two, and but this new one that the mayor's brought up, the new pink one, yep. which will potentially transfer. We should be very well, careful about land, what liability is going to come back to us anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, um, so my question was the, uh, the the protection that we're looking at for the ponds side. What's applying to what is happening at the Caspian Street site on the right? So it's not a site we've investigated yet. So that's well, if we go okay. back to the previous report, this is what we want to, to be able to do. Is, is do you think there's more risk than on the left hand side? Uh, is that what you're saying? What we have with the, the Bexley site is we have exposed material at the moment. Right, so, okay. Yeah, I'll get you. Yeah. I'm with you. Thanks. But to answer the first part of your question. Uh, oh, yeah. It, it, very early on, we. Um, sent a letter to MKT about um, you know, what we were doing and what the involvement they wanted and they basically came back saying they'd like to be informed all the way along. So we've uh, given them a few updates um, but we haven't, haven't given them an update of, of this yet but we will need to do that. Andrew? Yeah, thank you. As regards um, potential investigation of a solution involving sheet piling, as has been suggested, um, Whilst there might be cost benefits, obviously we need to consider environmental and cultural effects and considerations. Consideration, con considering the um, consenting environments, and that what would be proposed would be introducing um, foreign materials, foreign elements into the marine environment, would you anticipate consenting difficulties or, or objections to a solution like this? I'm guessing on environmental, but possibly on cultural grounds as well. Would, would you anticipate that might be the case? Well, we've, so we've, it's obviously a natural um, rock replacement um, to the existing clay cap. 
So we're, I guess we're only introducing natural material back to that site. Um, but yeah, we definitely need to investigate the, the actual consent requirements. Um, I, think you've I think you're answering a question different than the one that I asked. Um, my question was as regards the suggestion that we might use sheet piling. Ah. And the difficulty of gaining consent or not. All oh, right. So we, we haven't considered that, but that'll... Yeah, that the sheet piling was, yeah, wasn't considered, but I, I, I take your point as, as, as it could be problematic from that aspect. So you would consider that it could easily be problematic from a consenting viewpoint? Without investigating, I, I think potentially it could be, yeah. yeah. Mike? Melanie? Um, because the, um, for option one, the, um, the effect on rates will be, you know, not there won't be any effect on rates because of deferred um, other renewals. I was wondering what those are, because it says in, in part three of that recommendation about deferring other rates funded renewals. So I was just wondering if you, what you were thinking of deferring. Uh, we have a, a project that uh, we, we are for the inner city development um, that we are Currently, we've, we've got an RFQ out. The, the, the work that we would hope to have got that started, uh, we won't probably start um, uh, into the next financial, so we look, we're looking at potentially money uh, available from there. Um, and we are looking at increased revenue uh, available from uh, an, operate, an activity at Burwood Landfill, uh, with soils coming in through... Um, uh, for the next 12 months, that consent lasts through to the end of 2020, and potentially uh, the money from there. So not renewals as such, but we are identifying where we can get money from for uh, funding that option. Right. So one's a deferred project and one's an additional income. Yeah. Well, I'd like to, I'd be happy to move option one at this stage. Did you have another question, Melanie? No, second. Oh, you're second. Okay. Any discussion? Yanni? Can we just be clear, if if we're if another project's being deferred, like Central City, is it the recycling? It's the, the inner city of all waste collection, the inner right. city. Yep. So, I mean, I think we should have formal resolutions that record that, because, yeah, I just feel a little bit uncomfortable about just suddenly finding money and not having transparency way, around what's actually going to So you want stopped. that deferral put into the resolution? Well, I think we, sh we should know what is, the implications are. How much of the money is that? Is that? I, I suppose to be, be clear on that, it, it is underway, but the capital expenditure won't occur this financial. So we find the money next year for something else? Yeah, I mean... Yes. Yeah. So... Okay. okay. And, and can I just... Very, just sorry to come back to it, but just to be really clear, like there's no opportunity for recreation along this bund, effectively. We're in debate, Yanni, and that's been raised with the gentlemen and they have answered that previously. So you're going to look out for any opportunities in any future projects. Yes. Um, any further debate? Um, Phil and then Tim. So just so I'm clear, if, if I agree to this, I'm agreeing to going ahead with the 1.3, nothing to do with sheet piling. OK, so I won't be supporting this because there's a... I feel there's, there's, it's better to look at that option. There'll be zero um, maintenance going forward. I've asked the guy for a price, but he hasn't come back to me yet. That's why I went out of the room. Um, <laughs> so so it, 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 I think it should be looked at. But, but so if we're doing it the way it's written, I won't be supporting it. Thanks. Thanks for all the we that. Yeah. James? <laughs> oh, sorry, Tim and then James. Um, yeah, look, I... I I totally respect and, and thank the, for the work that's been done, but I do think you know we are a council under pressure, and we've got to look at the options that are more cost effective with regards to the ongoing maintenance. Um, and as we've got sheet piling across the other side of the estuary and red cliffs, there's obviously been a resource consent granted for that. So I can't see why one side of the estuary wouldn't be getting a resource consent when the other side's already got one. So um, I do think we've got to be um, very clever with our money as we go forward because we don't seem to be adding things, we seem to be losing things. So I will not be supporting this. James? Um, I won't repeat what the last two councillors have, uh, have said, but I agree w with them on the principle of the, except I'll say for the principle of the, um, 
ongoing maintenance cost and um, and also want to see another option considered. So I won't be supporting it. Right. Um, Melanie Vignani. You go first. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll just in endorse that. Um, and, you know, like I think this is important. We do need to address it. But personally, I feel that we should get a, a, a second opinion around that, that issue that's been raised. And also, um, I mean, I, I still just, in my mind, look at, you know this amazing coastline and the desire for recreation along it and i would just feel a little bit more comfortable having a little bit more explanation about what's happening with the 360 trail because it, it's been bubbling away for a long time so you know i think if you look at this this report came to the community board i, I don't know when uh, quite a few months ago it, it was being deferred I, I don't see that having any sort of deferral for a few months or another month over christmas to allow that extra work to happen would would in any way sort of delay this significantly so I, I think I'm with the mind of what the other speakers have said I won't be in a position to support this today but it is important work that we do need to address. Right. Melanie and then Jimmy. Um, I'll be supporting it because um, I, I would have thought that the, the staff hopefully would have come back with all the you know looked at all the options that were appropriate I think um, the um, value on the natural environment by residents is something that we all should be considering and also that they mentioned that the the cost of um, you know looking after maintenance each year was actually lower than what they expected. So I'm, I'm thinking it won't be as expensive as we think it will be. Mm. Anyone else want to speak to this? Oh, Jimmy. Of course, why the to me it looks like a, you know we have not yet. This is the overall you know the the kind of option to uh, mitigate this effect because why the pure with the, the, the items, particularly emphasize total 133. But uh, this one is under the con council own piece of land. It's a fi part of uh, 58 and three of 10, you know, to be the screening out, you know, during the uh, last uh, three months. Of, we thought that these three, the area need to be the uh, remediate, particularly regarding to the uh, sea, sea level rise, the, the one. But I'm concerned, so how about the other one? You know, I still don't know. How about those, the, those the 48 council on piece of land? Where about? When will we do this one? And also outside the council control, those the, uh, 75, those one. How, what's the other option? Whether they have any the, the cost effective or not? It looks like uncertainty. So to me, you know, we put into annual plan probably they will uh, raise another the, additional the, the, the issue is so for to me today I'm not supporting it. Thanks Jimmy. Jake? Um, just a process question, if there isn't the numbers for option one to go ahead, would it be best to foreshadow uh, another motion that this lay on the table while staff investigate um, alternative options? Yes. So I'm happy to move, or happy to foreshadow that. Okay. Mike. Thank you. I'll be supporting the, the motion. Um, the estuary is actually a unique natural environment and when you start putting hard engineering solutions in place you actually, you don't enhance the environment, you're actually going to degrade it. Um, I think we need to be very careful if we start going down that line. Um, this is actually a really good option. Um, I probably would have preferred to go to the uh, full protection but this is actually a good step in the but uh, I just when we talk about the site, different sides of the estuary, actually a lot of the amenity and natural environment has gone from the other side, the, the Red Cliffs side, because of the, the sheep piling. Um, we need to protect the estuary, look after the estuary, and you don't do that by actually installing hard engineering solutions into it. So uh, I'll be supporting this resolution. <laughs> with, with the permission of the chair, could I ask a question? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, how long would it take to do the investigation? I already on asked it. They don't know. They don't. You don't. You so don't there's no answer. there's no date as to when we would expect to get the report back if it was asked for under the foreshadowed motion <clears throat> for the sheet piling. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd only be guessing. Uh, I mean, there's, yeah. there's two issues there. There's the actual 
the cost of the work, but there's the actually the timeline on the consenting issue. Exactly, so and the likelihood of consent being able to be granted. And yeah, that's right. Which they did a feasibility consent. study. So they don't have an answer. So, I mean, even an indication, weeks, months. Yeah. Years could be. In all fairness, if you get object objections to a resource consent, it could take years. What I, wouldn't want, what I wouldn't want to see is people voting against option one because they think that the alternative is, is going to be viable, when in point of fact either it may not be or it may take so long to get to a point that damage has already been done that we're trying to um, avoid. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Um, and I, I guess you know, my, my position is exactly the same as Mike Davidson's. Um, I'll be quite happy to support the um, resolution that's put. Leanne. <clears throat> yes, I'll support the um, motion that we have in front of us, and the reason that I do so is because um, I, I thought at the beginning of the debate it would be around the first option or the second option, uh, which was a, a more expensive and, and potentially more comprehensive option. But I've listened to option, but I've listened to staff, and they've talked about how um, uh, this work has been done uh, further. Uh, around the estuary and uh, has withstood uh, the earthquake sequence of 2010-11 um, and so it is capable of doing the work that needs to be done. The other thing that I'm worried about um, is the potential for central government to uh, make a, a policy statement across the country in relation to um, uh, landfill aftercare matters. Uh, particularly in the relation to what's happened on the west coast and uh, I don't think anyone should close their eyes to what happened after Havelock North and the impact that that's had on a city that has a pristine aquifer fed water supply uh, and the impact central government can have by taking a one size fits all approach across the country. So I'm just saying that I would uh, prefer this option um, I, I, do, I, I do understand why um, a, uh, a, a, less, a less costly methodology, which has been applied not so much in the estuary environment but within the stormwater, uh, within the ponds, ponding system uh, that links to the estuary but is not directly into the estuary, um, I could understand that you would want to assess that. Um, but I actually think that it might be um, uh, an unrealistic expectation that that would produce anything other than delay. So that, that's my contribution to the debate. Thank you. All right, well, I'll close it by um, saying, of course, I'm supporting the resolution that I've moved and um, for all the reasons that have been given, but particularly that, look, that rain last night was far more intense than I was anticipating, and every time you get something like that, you go, oh, what's going to happen? Who's going to flood? What slip's going to happen? Now I'll be thinking, heck, is it going to wipe Bexley out or get a storm? And we can get one at any time, and we know that now. And I'm not prepared to risk in having an environmental disaster on our very own doorstep when we've had the warning from Fox River. I mean, that would just be remiss of us not to act. And even though I would lo have loved to have had the information about the sheet piling, I think that it's going to be a huge risk in the time factor in getting that through if it was viable. Um, and it would be in the resource consenting area. So um, for those reasons, and I think we really need to get on with this, plus I think that this option is going to actually look good. It's going to be robust. We've been assured of that by the example we've already got. And so um, I'm going to support it just so we can actually get on with it. So on that note, I'll put the motion, and I do hope you support it. All those in favour, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Can we see the noes? Raise the hand. One, two, three, four, so five, no. six, seven. Mm. Some division. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Councillor Skinner? No. Councillor Major? No. Councillor Keogh? No. Mm. Councillor Davidson? Yes. Councillor Potter? Yes. Councillor Turner? Yes. Seven, six, I have six for yes and seven for no. Right, so that's lost. Thank you. So we need your format shadowed motion. I'm happy to second it. I've already seconded it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mike. I'm looking for it. I haven't got it up yet. Where is it? It's not up. Yet, is it? Can you read it out? Sorry, Mike. That, that the report be left on the table while staff investigate other options, including sheet piling. Can we do that? Can we leave a report that we just voted against on the table? We've just voted the recommendation down. Oh, oh, I see, yeah, okay. Ian's not here today to advise us. No. No, they, they can to, br to bring forward. So what would happen if the sheet piling doesn't what would happen if the sheet piling didn't pan out and the staff's view? Well, they'd still have to come, come back, back to council and get a decision. Yeah. But it yes. doesn't rule out and what then. we've just decided. Yeah. Oh, it does, doesn't it? All right. Just put it. Mike. Mike wants to speak to you. Oh, look, just, just really quickly. I Sorry, think for just a council um, that values. What? Oh, just the wording hasn't included the, the sheet piling as part of the... Including sheet piling? Yeah. Sorry, Mike, start again. As a council that obviously values um, environmental well-being um, and also declared uh, ecological emergency, to actually go down this pathway, which we know will have a negative impact on a very unique natural environment, is actually shocking. It's actually disappointing to hear from this council. I will not be supporting this uh, motion as it stands. Phil? I think people understand, you, you, when, when I say sheet piling, I'm not saying out in the water, you won't see it. It will be flush with the ground right at the landfill edge. If you look at the cross sections, in some cases, it's probably three metres back from the water's edge, but it's just a a line of last resistance, so you could go along there, slam all the sheet piles in, and put them all down to ground level, um, and, you, and you won't see it. It won't, it won't be a wall of iron along the side of the thing that looks ghastly. That, that's the last thing I want to do. Right. Um, do you want to close it, Jake? And I'll put Yanni first. Yanni? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think... Um, for some of us, well, for, for me anyway, voting not to proceed with the earlier one doesn't mean that I'm necessarily supporting the sheet piling, but I've heard my colleagues say they'd like more information, and I've also raised about getting more information about other things as well, and I think it's perfectly reasonable. don't think there's any shame in councils listening to our colleagues and saying, actually, we'd like to spend a little bit more time getting some more information so that when we come to make the decision, we make a good decision based on all the advice that we need. So. Um, personally, you know, I, I don't think it's fair to attack us for not supporting the options previously. Um, I'm more than happy to allow my colleagues, particularly my new council colleagues who have since been elected prior to this going, oh sorry, after this has gone to the community board, to get the information that they require. So I have no qualms about this. I support um, getting the information back. Um, I would have liked to have some information back on the recreation. I'll just follow that up offline anyway. That'd be good. Thanks, Yanni. Tim? And then Andrew. Thank you. Lot. I'm fully aware of the, 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 the need to get information on this and to get this moving because if we look at it, the natural environment of the estuary, we've got 
a landfill, which is part of it, which is not very natural, let's be honest. We then have a line in, in the coast with regards to the edge of a sewage pond, which is, you know, arguably is that natural? No, not really. Then on the Redcliffe side, we've got the piling, which you have, you can't see at all, that are made, made to look kind of natural, but it's, again, that's not natural. So I think it's a when we talk about the natural environment, it's about protecting what is left there, but we've got to do that responsibly, and I think to get the, as much information as we can, and that is all we're asking for, further information on this to go forward, and that's all I'm asking for. Um, Andrew, then James. Thank you. Um, given where we, that we've got to where we've got to, obviously I'm keen to progress a solution as quickly as possible. Um, I've got no doubt that the um, information when it comes back will canvas some of the issues that have been raised in questions, and it will be good to get that information um, in a, a firm and definite way so that we can take it into account. Um, so without any prejudice as to what the outcome might be, um, given that we've, we've turned down the option that was previously, previously proposed and, and we're now asking for further information, um, I would prefer us to have the further information than not, and I would request that that information be brought back as quickly as possible, but also as fully as possible so that we understand all of the implications. James. Kia ora. Uh, I appreciate and, and endorse the comments of uh, Yanni. Thank you. Um, but, and, and I also, I'm not saying that I want sheet piling, but I want to know more about this. I didn't know anything about this yeah. until I got here. Yeah. <coughs> That's fine. Um, Aaron? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, we're not in an imminent danger of a catastrophe. Um, <laughs> touch wood. Yeah, yeah, famous yeah. last words. Yeah, we finished um, lunch time. But uh, if my only concern around the whole thing, because we should be f as fiscally responsible as possible at all times, but my only concern would be if we, it comes back that the consenting process would take months or years, then if that process makes a mockery of the entire system uh, if we're trying to do something to protect an environment and yet it will be held up by months or years because of a system that's there to protect the environment. Mm, interesting, isn't it? Like hardy ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> Are you speaking, Jake? So I'll, I'll quickly make a comment that yes, I agree with Andrew, I also agree with Mike, I'm quite outraged at this because I do think there is a sense of urgency, we can be complacent but in retrospect if something happens we would kick ourselves and it would hurt. But um, I will um, reluctantly agree with this so that we are doing something rather than nothing. Um, Jake, I'll just quickly say, off? yeah, I'll just quickly say that I agree with Andrew's comments. For me, this is I'm strongly leaning towards option one. I suspect that in the end of the day, that's where we'll get to. But for me, this is about being definite in our decision making. I just didn't feel that all the information um, was necessarily to hand. And yeah, that's it. Well, oh, and sorry. it's important to note that when this information does come back issues around how long or how difficult this might be to consent will be canvassed at that time and we can make a call accordingly. Yeah, thank you. Well said. All right, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's Mike opposed. Okay, thank you. And I'll call upon um, my trusty deputy, James, to do the katakia. Uh, which is our speaking is finished and the mana comes back to the chambers. Kia ora. Kia ora. So I close the meeting.